Well, hey guys, this is Jeff, and I just wanted to take a minute just to share with you kind of what's on my heart, what's on my mind over the last week. And um, I think most of us are in the same boat, though, where we're spending a whole lot uh, more time at home, or at least we're supposed to be, right? And we're spending a whole lot more time uh, together with the people that we love more than anyone else on earth, our spouses, our significant others, our kids, maybe we've got adult parents living with us, we're spending more time with them, uh, we're spending a whole lot more time with people that we love, and there are really awesome parts uh, that go along with that. I love that I have my kids with me all day, my wife is with me all day, a and then I think most of us also experience that um, after two to three weeks of that, uh, we can start to grade on each other and get on each other's nerves a little bit. And especially with everything else going on right now with all of our concerns and uh, people we care about, maybe some of us are home from our jobs, maybe some of us are trying to work from home while their kids are here. I mean, that's that's certainly the case for me. I'm, I'm working from home and my kids are around me all the time. And um, yeah, we're starting to see some of this kind of stuff going on uh, with our relationships. So, uh, so I wonder... Does the Bible have anything to say about that that might help us? And I think the good news, just like just about any situation in life, is, is that yes, God, God, like he saw this ahead of time. He saw these kind of things and gave us words to encourage us and help us. So uh, I want to share with you a passage. It's found in one of the Gospels, uh, what Mark wrote down, the things that he had seen and observed uh, about Jesus and, and interviewed people and found out their thoughts as well. And um, this is actually a passage that our, our staff, our Journeys Crossing staff studied quite a bit in the fall. So Jesus is just coming off kind of some exhausting time. He was teaching, teaching, teaching large crowds of people nonstop. And that probably also meant healing people and, and everything that comes with it. And it says, as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and they started out leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. So the, yeah, it didn't, it didn't stop for Jesus, right? People kept chasing after him. But soon a fierce storm came up and high waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. Okay. Um, where do we expect Jesus in this? Where do you think his followers expected Jesus? He's got his disciples with him. Those are the the very closest people, the, the people that he would consider his best friends on it. Catch this. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. After everything that was going on, there's boats kind of chasing them across the lake. The storm is coming down. There's wind and lightning and rain and waves. And Jesus found a little pillow and he curled up, and he went to sleep. And if you know the rest of the stories, the disciples wake him up. They're freaking out. They say, don't you care? We're going to drown. You kind of, you're a jerk for letting us go through this. And Jesus stands up, and he calms the wind and calls the waves. And he says, well, gosh, you guys don't have any faith at all. But I want to focus on the posture that Jesus took in the midst of the storm. He had an exhausting, exhausting time. He had taught. He had healed. Uh, he had people following the boats. So we knew the second they touched down on land, people were going to be, you know, kind of pestering him again uh, for more teaching, for more healing. And in the midst of it all, he just said, I need rest. And he grabbed that cushion and he lay down on the back of the boat and he went to sleep. And for us today, 2,000 years later, um, as we try to work from home or maybe we've been laid off and we've got financial worries, we're around the people who are closest to us, just like Jesus was. Um, and Jesus chose to rest and take care of himself. And I would say that's what Jesus wants for us too. He wants us to care for ourselves in the midst of everything that's going on, even though we're surrounded by the people who we love the most in the world. He just wants us to care for ourselves. And for each of us, that's going to look a little bit different. Uh, it might look like rest. It might look like, you know what? It's two in the afternoon and I need half an hour to myself in my bedroom alone. I think Jesus would say, yeah, you do that. Uh, it might look like uh, getting out and running. It might look like 
Uh, you're the one who's going to take the quick trip to the grocery store to look for toilet paper, and you're going to do it without anybody else with you. Do that. Whatever it is you know you best, whatever it is you know is going to be the, the best self-care for you. Whether it's reading, quiet time, maybe it's game time with others. Maybe that's really what cares for you. But whatever that is, I want to encourage you to do that. And I want to encourage you to do that because I think that's what Jesus would encourage you to do too. Take care of yourself. Get the rest you need. Get the, the personal time you need. The exercise you need. Whatever it is you need to be able to keep investing in the lives of others. That's what you've got to do. When you're on the airplane, right, they, you know, they go through the whole safety protocol at the beginning. And they always say, you know, the cabin depressurizes, which I, I've never known anyone that's happened to. The masks are kind of going down. What do they say? You grab a mask and put it on you before you help anyone around. If you're traveling with children and those masks come down, you grab that mask and put it on you before you help your children. Because it's hard to help your children when you're gasping for breath, right? It's the same principle here. Take care of yourself during this time. Whatever you need to do to spend that moment in the back of the boat like Jesus did, I really want to encourage you to do it. I want to pray with you real quick before we leave. God, we love you. We love your son, Jesus, and we love the example that he left us that in the midst of the storm, in the midst of all the work that needed to be done, surrounded by his closest friends, Jesus grabbed a cushion and he headed to the back of the boat just to rest. God, uh, there's something I know about every person who's hearing this prayer. None of us are Jesus. And so if anyone needs more rest than he did, it's us. We can't do it without taking care of ourselves and rest. So when we're feeling frazzled, when we're feeling burnt out, when we see the friction start to come into the relationships around us, remind us to get into the back of the boat ourselves, to listen to some music, to read, to sleep, whatever it is that you've built us to do. God, help us to care for ourselves. It's how you designed us, and we know the way you designed us is perfect. We love you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great day, and remember to take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Fill me up till I overflow. 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 Fill me up till I overflow.